In this video, we're going to use the uh, shape information we uh, identified in the previous video to uh, generate a very accurate graph of this function, or of uh, the equation y equals x cubed minus x, uh, with a minimum of points and all of the shapes that the function has identified through the first and second derivatives. So let's first uh, take the derivative of this function, which is easy to do using the rules we've learned, the power rule in this case, and that gives us a first derivative of 3x squared minus 1. After we take uh, the first derivative of a function, our second uh, step will be to set that first derivative equal to 0. So our first step is to uh, find where the first derivative equals 0, and that will identify what we call the critical values, those x values where this occurs. So let's see how to do that. We don't need any sophisticated algebra in this case. We just move the 1 over to the other side of this equation, divide through by 3, and take the square root of both sides to get the two critical values. The two critical values, x equals plus or minus the square root of 3 over 3. If we put those two critical values on uh, a number line, we see that that divides our number line into three regions, which we have tagged with the Roman numerals 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so uh, our step two is going to be to find the uh, sign of the derivative in each of the three regions that we've identified. Notice that we have two critical values, but that divides our uh, number line into three regions. So there's one more region than the number of critical values we determine. So when we um, determine to determine the signs in each of these regions, all we have to do is plug in any value we want in each of those regions. In region 1, we will note that square root of 3 is about 1.7. When we divide it by 3, we get about 0.6. And um, so we will pick a easiest value to plug in to our derivative in that region, which is going to be the x value minus 1. When we plug that x value minus 1 into our derivative, right, we're trying to find the sign of the derivative. We don't really need the uh, specific number. We only need the sign of the number. We need to know whether the graph is rising or falling. So if we plug minus 1 into the derivative, it's going to make this term positive 3, and this term is always minus 1, and so that gives us a derivative of positive sign. In our re next region, region 2, between minus square root of 3 over 3 and plus square root of 3 over 3, 0 is the easiest x value to plug in, and it should be uh, clear that if we plug 0 into this derivative expression here, that uh, we get a negative sign for the derivative. And then finally, in our region 3, we're to the right of square root of 3 over 3. We pick the easiest value to plug in to the right of approximately 0.6. That x value is positive 1. We plug that in, and we get a positive sign for the derivative in that region. So let's note that information on our number line. So we put the uh, information about the uh, derivatives in the three regions on either side of the two critical values that the function it has a positive derivative here, a negative derivative here, and a positive derivative here. So let's also note that the function is decreasing in this region, increasing in this region, and decreasing in this region. So now what we want to do is essentially do the same thing for the second derivative that we just did for the first. We're going to take the second derivative, set it equal to 0, find those values where it is 0, and 
that will divide our number line into regions and we'll determine the sign of the second derivative in those regions. So let's do that on the next blackboard. So we've got the second derivative up here. Second derivative is just the derivative of the first derivative. We're going to set that equal to zero. This is very easy to solve. It only gives one solution. Uh, we don't call that a critical value. It's actually a potential inflection point. If it changes sign, the second derivative changes sign on either side of this x value, it is an inflection point. And so let's set up our number line with this uh, value x on it. So here we have uh, only one value where the second derivative is 0. And so one more region than the zeros of the derivative, first or second. So two regions in which we have to test. In our region 1, we can pick an x value of negative 1. And in our region 2, we can pick an x value of positive 1. So we get the easiest values. We pick the easiest values we can to plug in to our derivative. Our derivative is the second derivative, in this case, 6x. So we've got our grid set up. We're testing the x value minus 1. In this case, we're plugging it into the second derivative. And it should be clear that that gives us a negative sign for the second derivative. Our test value in region 2 is positive 1. We plug that into the second derivative and that gives us a positive sign for the second derivative. So here we're concave down and here we're concave up. And so if we note that we are concave <coughs> down in this region and we are concave up in this region. Our second derivative is negative here. Our second derivative is positive here. What we want to do at this point is put all of this information we have gained together on one number line, and we call that gathered information a sign chart for the derivatives. We do that so we can determine shapes, because we want to see first and second derivative information together uh, for each region that we've identified. So let's do that on the next blackboard. Let's set that up. So we're setting up our sign chart for the first and second derivative. Uh, this uh, first line here, first, first row, we've actually got three rows here. The row for the uh, x value, the row for the first derivative, and the row for the second derivative. And on the x row we put the uh, two critical values for where the first derivative was zero, and the um, place where the second derivative is 0, the x value where the second derivative is 0. And across from y prime, we've identified those two places where y prime was 0. And across from uh, y double prime, we've identified the uh, one place where that was 0. So let's look back to our uh, previous charts to see the signs that we got for the first derivative. And the signs were... Uh, negative, positive, um, negative. So let's put that information in. So when we fill in a sign chart, we're just putting the signs of the, either the first or second derivative in on either side of the places where the um, where the derivative is 0 or where the second derivative is 0. We just fill in the region with minus signs or plus signs. doesn't matter how many we put. We just want to identify that this region, the first derivative, is negative. This entire region, the first derivative, is positive. This entire region, the first derivative, is negative. Same thing with the uh, second derivative, which we've identified previously as having a negative second derivative here and a positive second derivative here. So we'll put that information in our sign chart and again just fill it in the region with plus or minus signs and then plus signs. Now, our uh, function in this case has uh, four regions to it. Uh, I'm going to identify the dividing lines for those regions uh, right now. 
So we've identified the uh, three dividing lines. Dividing lines are either where the first derivative is 0 or where the second derivative is 0. So three dividing lines gives us four regions. Okay, so now we're going to use the uh, shape information that we uh, discussed in the previous video for this section combining first and second derivative information to get the shapes of uh, the shape of the graph in these uh, four regions. So in region 1, the graph is uh, decreasing and concave down. So decreasing and concave down has this shape. If you're looking at or listening to what I'm saying closely, you notice that I just uh, had an error that I fixed. Uh, the first derivative is actually um, to the left of minus square root of uh, minus square root of three over three, increasing between minus square root of three over three and uh, uh, minus square root of three over three and plus square root of three. It's decreasing, and over here, it's increasing. So, in our Region 1, the function is increasing concave down, which is this shape. Actually, I should probably draw it left to right. Increasing concave down. In our region 2, the graph is uh, concave down, but it changes to decreasing. In our region 3, it um, remains uh, concave uh, or remains decreasing but it shifts to concave up and finally in our region 4 it remains uh, concave up but it shifts to increasing so our graph we've actually got the shape of our graph already determined the only thing that remains to be done is to find the y value at these three important points, the relative maximum as we see here, right? Because it changes, the first derivative changes sign from positive to negative and our relative minimum at this point right here because the first derivative changes sign from decreasing to increasing and our uh, inflection point here because the second derivative changes sign on either side of that point. So let's find the y value at those three x values. We want to find the uh, uh, y values at these three x values, the relative max, the relative min, and the inflection point. And let's make special note that we're plugging these x values into, into the original function. We had been plugging x values into the first derivative to determine first derivative signs and x values in the second derivative to determine second derivative signs, but now we're getting points on the graph, these three key points on the graph, and so we're plugging them into the original function. So those uh, three x values, uh, uh, the middle one, is very easy to obtain uh, for the uh, first and second one. I'm going to let you do your calculations off to the side to confirm these values. So we've determined the uh, y value at these three x values and just gotten approximations for the uh, first and third one. So let's uh, plot these three points and then show the shape of the graph in the four regions uh, on either or defined by these three points. So we've identified the uh, three key points on the graph this relative maximum at minus square root of 3 over 3, point, uh, 0.385, or approximately 0.385, this relative minimum at uh, positive square root of 3 over 3, minus 0.385, and this uh, inflection point right here uh, at the point zero zero. So let's uh, note, uh, see that the function has the correct four shapes by um, drawing them. As we move left to right, <clears throat> the function is increasing concave down in this region, still concave down but shifted to decreasing in this region, 
still decreasing but shifted to concave up in this region and still concave up but shifted to increasing in this region and also that the graph um, is up and to the point uh, up to the point zero zero bowl shaped down and after the point zero zero it is bowl shaped up or uh, concave down so let's tag all these and then we'll remove all this so we can uh, take a look and confirm so there's the concave down part of the graph there's the concave uh, up part of the graph and uh, here the first derivative is positive and the second derivative is negative in this region right here it's going to get kind of crowded here in this region right here the first derivative is negative and the second derivative is also negative in this region right here the uh, first derivative is still negative but the second derivative has shifted to positive and then finally in this region here um, both the first derivative and the second derivative are positive so there's the uh, graph of our function uh, it is done with uh, us knowing with assurance that we have the shape uh, right uh, in every part of the graph uh, I've actually used two additional points that we uh, got by setting the function itself equal to 0 x cubed minus x equals 0 factor <coughs> factor out the x and we get uh, three values x equals minus 1, 0, and 1 and this point right here is one of those zeros for the function the point minus one zero and this point right here is the third of them uh, one zero we already had the zero zero point here so I've tagged those two uh, or actually the three zeros with a uh, yellow dot the middle zero is also an inflection point let's uh, flip back to see what we did just as a, a recap we uh, first um, uh, took our, our first derivative, set it equal to zero, found critical values, determined signs, and we saw that the uh, first derivative was increasing, decreasing, increasing. We did the same with the second derivative. These are actually our steps uh, three and four. Step three to find where the uh, second derivative is zero, and step four to do the sign chart. We found concave down to the left of zero, concave up to the right of zero. We combined all of that information together in one chart uh, and found the shape of the graph in its four regions. And the shapes were this shape, this shape, this shape, and this shape. And then we put all that information together on a nice, neat graph, uh, graphing, uh, making sure we included the three uh, key points, the two points that were the max and the min, the inflection point, and also the two additional points that we hadn't already found where the graph crossed the uh, x-axis. With that, we got an extremely accurate graph uh, only plotting five points and knowing with assurance that we have the correct shape connecting all those points and the correct shape in every region. On our next video, we are going to uh, continue um, with this uh, uh, application of first and second derivative information to graphs with a slightly more uh, complex function, actually uh, quite a bit more complex function. So the algebra is more involved, but the techniques we have identified here are exactly the same.